Okay, great. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm hoping the folks online can can hear us. Um, I'm not. It, we're still trying to figure out the hop-in system here. <laughs> um, but thank you all for for joining. Um, my name is April Elsie, and I'm the uh, director of product management for ProQuest um, dissertations and theses. So. What that means is it's my, um, all of the sort of dissertations and theses related products and services that ProQuest offers, um, including ETD Administrator, our um, free um, ETD submission workflow tool fall under my, under my responsibility. Uh, I joined ProQuest uh, about three years ago and I came a while ago, like many, many hats ago, I was an academic so I um, had a STEM degree, a PhD degree, and I um, went through the traditional path of postdoc and then went on to be a researcher and uh, was at Michigan State University for about eight years. And go green. <laughs> um, I'm an ag school person, so I've been a lot. Big ag schools is where I, I sort of um, grew up in my academic journey. And then I made a segue from um, at the academy to um, education technology because I was interested in building tools for teaching I mean, large classrooms. So technology-driven teaching as well as um, online learning. So one of my first big um, asks of my department was to build the first online, fully online genetics course for my department. So that was where I started getting into technology and I recognize that there were a lot of really cool things you can do with technology and teaching, but they weren't all being made the way I wanted them to be made. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could make the decisions around what was being made to have a broader impact um, across um, higher education? And that's how I found product management. And it was a long, I never, I didn't wake up and go, I'm going to be a product manager when I grow up. Uh, it just it's end up how I ended up here. And uh, I haven't looked back because I really enjoyed being able to apply the my experience as a grad student, as a faculty member to the higher education space. Dissertations and theses fits very nicely under that because I understand many different aspects of that, of that journey. And so uh, I joined Clarivate, like I mentioned, three years ago. And since then, I've really been focused on um, bringing dissertations and theses to the forefront for the as the valuable type of content that they really are. Um, they really are unique in you know in the academic you know output of of, of research, um, and it's because there are so many um, valuable pieces of information inside dissertations and theses that never see the light of day outside of that document. They don't make it into the peer-reviewed, you know, um, top-tier journals or peer review at all. Grad students may decide not to submit their work to be published, or it may never get published because of peer review. But that doesn't necessarily mean the quality isn't there. And so what you end up with is a lot of information that, um, because of the digital trans transformation we're seeing, you can get into the dissertation now and really harness and find such amazing connections amongst historical information, especially around diversity um, and inclusion, you know, studies of looking at historical patterns that you just can't do without taking a look at the dissertation and including them in your in your research. So I see them as highly valuable. I know everyone in this, in this room will agree with me. Um, and so I felt uh, I've taken on this mission to try to make them um, as discoverable as possible within our own platform, adding enhancements and metadata enrichment but also working on our ETD submission tool to bring and make it easier for the information to be submitted, processed, and then made part of you know, the various, whether it's your institutional repository or on PQDT itself, you know, making sure that information gets as widely and broadly disseminated as possible. So that's my story. And then today, here today with me is um, Lucas. Would you like to introduce yourself, Lucas? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is uh, Lucas Otto. Um, unlike April, uh, I wanted to be a product manager since I was a child. And no, um, no, I, um, no, I, um, I've, I've been with ProQuest for about seven weeks now, so I'm relatively new. I'm not new to product management, um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new in this area. But uh, you know, fascinating to me. 
Um, I don't I don't have a PhD like like many of you, although I do have a law degree, and so I don't know if that counts as anything either against me or for me. <laughs> um, but um, I I have a long history um, in, in publishing product management, to be honest, and. I'm really excited to kind of be here and, you know, I've been learning a lot from everybody here, which is, you know, what more can you ask for at a conference just to learn. And then hopefully today, you know, we're going to, we're going to show you some things and, and get some feedback from you on some you know, great ideas or just, you know, things that you're, you know, dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis in the dissertation process and, and really take that back with us and, and, you know, kind of build the tool the way that you need it to be built. That's correct. So our goal today, then, we'll be talking to you a little bit about the roadmap for ETD Administrator. So where we are this, so far this year, things that we've released, um, things that are coming in the near future. And then what we really hope to do is, as Lucas mentioned, is to harness from you our next North Star. Like, What is our North Star for this product so that we can meet the needs that you have that are the most urgent and most valuable to be solved? Um, not to say that we won't continue to work on some of the smaller things as well, but what we're really hoping for is to get, you know, those not next couple of things that are going to really change and help the students and your workflows. And of course, your mission of making that content available and disseminated as widely as possible. So first of all, I would like to, I would like to start, so I want to see if I can move my slide without having... How do you move it if you don't have it? I know what I'll do. I like this. Can I show it? It was working before. Let me try this. Aha! All right. <laughs> so the themes of this year have been um, really delivering value to admins and students. So I've I've uh, taken on this these products relatively recently. So I've been spending quite a bit of time diving into ETD Administrator as it is today and listening to you tell me what is working and not working um, and really focusing and ramping up our engagement with, with, our, with our users. And through our um, ideas portal and interactions with discovery communities that we've had in the past, as well as Austin's long memory of hearing um, what ETD administrator users uh, have been wanting forever. Um, we've come up this, this, this last year with you know, four themes. One is um, helping to easily manage embargoes, which is always near and dear and a uh, you know, challenge. Um, so making sure that we enforce a strict, we are enforcing our embargo for you strictly. We have a very rapid response takedown policy. Should there be a change to the embargo, updating embargo dates, releasing when embargo is expired, and all of that is taking place. Um, we have a 24 to 48 hour turnaround time for any takedown for embargo and updates, and updates to embargoes are done daily. So we are really proud of those new, and it's not only new, but I guess incremental changes that we've been um, executing to ensure that you can trust us to manage your embargo as you would like it to be managed or the, if you allow the students to do it, how the students would like it to be managed. Um, we're all, that's something we're doing on the ProQuest platform. But um, within ETD Administrator, providing the flexibility for you as admins to manage the whether there's a single embargo, whether your embargo is also the ProQuest embargo, making sure those align and you can have a single embargo that manages embargo across ProQuest and your own, your own I, respecting your, your IR embargo. And then what I'd like to see more of in which we aren't doing yet, and I think we have an opportunity is to really allow, find ways for you to educate your students in ETD Administrator about embargoes. Like what is an embargo? What is the impact of putting your work under embargo? You know, because uh, we've heard from our graduate school deans as well that they're, they're struggling to have students not always just put their work under embargo, they're hearing a lot of different information. And when it's under embargo, it doesn't get as, it doesn't have as much visibility. It doesn't have that ability, you know, to be, to be um, visualized and, 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 and accessed. So helping students to make informed decisions or helping you to help them make informed decisions around embargo. The other is improved work, improving our communication workflows. So this year we released our customization of email templates. 
So you can go in and set up your email templates the way you would you would like, which has been, I think, really well received. It's been a long ask. So that was our big release of this year. Um, and then now we're also working on a new way for you to track the email history of your interactions for a submission. And with that history, be able to resend, to view, update, and resend an email all from the same page. So that when the students say you didn't send the email, you can say, well, here I have a record, I sent the email, you can resend it, you can change the email address right there in case they you sent it to the wrong email address. And you've got a rolling history of those communications with your, with your students. The other is um, really trying to allow you to have more autonomy in setting your site settings. So, you know, there's no reason why, in my opinion, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you can always call customer support, but if you don't really want to call customer support to change your logo or update what you call your site or your degrees that you offer, your list of departments, um, all of those things, your, your checklists, that's not on here, but it's, it's a big ask that you, we, we've heard you ask for. Right now we're working on those, releasing those ways for you to just be able to own your own management of your own site. Um, and that is a theme that we will carry forward. There's a lot of opportunity there. And then what's coming soon is we're really trying to re-envision how we present to you the different work, the, the tracking of your workflow with, with the student. So we realize we've got, you know, you know, version, we've got, you know, decision tracking, and we've got, you know, submit you know, all these various fields for you to track where your submission is, but it's not all together for you in one place where you can open and go, okay, <laughs> these are the steps, this is where we are, and make it simple um, for you to understand what you've done on this submission and where things stand. That's a really big one. Um, and another one that we'll be moving forward with too is doing the same thing for the student, allowing them to visually see where they are in the process. Track it, you know, like, you know, you can imagine like a little dot line with dots, you know, here's where you are, this is what to expect next. And also with their orders, because they, they do place orders through us. And I hear they call you too, like, where's my stuff? And then they call us, where's my stuff? And a lot of that could be completely self-service. If we had it with an ETD administrator, they can go and look and they will, you know, be able to tell them where their order is and set expectations for when it will arrive. Because with sh you know shipping and supply chain and all of the things we've been under, you know, it can be a while and they get anxious about it and they shouldn't be calling you to ask you where our order <laughs> through us is. So um, to help them too and to help you as well. So that's sort of where we've been thinking for this year going into 2023. So what we've released this year um, is that now you can through, um, this is not yet available for you to do, but it will be an admin feature for you to go in. We can turn this on for you today, but eventually it'll be for you to do yourself. The setting up embargoes, the single embargo, so that you can see this little line right here. You know, do you want your IR um, selections to, you know, govern the ProQuest embargo? You just select that and that's it. So once you set your IR, um, uh, uh, IR embargo settings and the student goes through the process, it's automatically what ProQuest um, respects. So that makes it simpler because there was confusion around having two different embargo types and the students would get confused and there were different settings. And so we, we've heard for a long time. So that is um, already available to you if you would like it turned on for your site. Like I said, eventually we'll make it so you can go in and turn it on yourself. Um, the email template customization, we did this already. You guys have seen this. This was released before, but you can go in now and you can update your email templates. I won't spend too much time on that because that's been out for a while. If you have questions about it, please feel free to ask um, me and I can walk you through it. What's coming soon? So later on this, this year, it's a really small thing, but I think it'll help the students. It's so right now when um, students will do a, have a revision that they're supposed to be submitting, they'll go through and they'll go, oh, I uploaded my, my revision, but they forget to hit the submit revision button. And so it sits there and they're like, well, wh why isn't my admin working on my revision? So we send out an email to remind them that you have to go back in and submit your, make sure you, we, we recognize that they have uploaded something, but they never hit the submit button and it's been sitting there. We send them an email that has this, we've noticed that you have made revisions um, but you haven't submitted them yet. 
And if you, and until you submit them, your administrator won't be able to move forward. So please go to this page and we link them directly to their submit page. All they have to do is click the submit revision button and that's it. And then it's a, it takes them in simple, right? For them to be able to do that. But it's a big deal for them and for you because then you're not waiting and they're not waiting, right? So that's something that we've just uh, rolled out or will be rolling out um, uh, sometime this, this year. And this is what we're working on for the future. So this is an actual prototype of what we're what we're we're building. But I, what you're seeing here needs work, and this is where you guys come in. So this is our initial vision. As you can see here, there's this email history button here under your under your uh, manage ETDs. This email history, then this is a snapshot of here's the various emails that have been sent. This was when it was sent. Who sent it? It would be you. <laughs> um, the details you can open and view, and then you can resend from here. So you've got all you've got your email correspondence all in sort of um, chronological order. Um, but what we also realize is that you also have other places where you're tracking decisions and you're tracking, um, you know, various steps on different pages. And so before we just send out an email history list, like, well, let's rethink how we can present to you the information of all of the steps that are happening and make a more consolidated, simplified way for you to manage visually and, and execute on steps. So, you know, based on your feedback, we could release this email history and give it to you and you can use it, or we can get your input. You say, well, maybe we wanna rethink this or a combination of both. So we're hoping that to get feedback from, from our users about um, how this, how they would like to see this. So for example, Here's a where if you view that, if you in this email history, you hit view email, it'll take you here. It'll, you can edit the email address. You can edit the carbon copy that you're sending it to and you can hit, re, hit resend. Um, but you also have your view decisions list. Like, well, isn't some of the emails part of your decisions? So wouldn't viewing decisions and the email associated with those decisions maybe go on the same page? I don't know. And so this was where we like to work with you to kind of walk through how you do the workflow and how you would like to see your steps that you've taken. And then we can build those pages in a way that makes sense for you instead of just throwing another page in here. Um, and so our roadmap for um, coming soon is uh, we'll be adding um, the option for students to order an A4 size copy. This is not a big deal, but we have a lot of international students that like the A4 because that's US eight and a half by 11 is US eight and a half by 11. And it's most of the world doesn't use US. So this is a new A A4 format that we've been able to um, to roll out that they can order. But also here is that work that that remind email um, for the students to be able to um, go and finish their submission. We'll be rolling out the admin, your self-service. This is next coming up, branding, managing your departments and managing degrees yourselves, including bulk management of, of, of departments. And then this new email history page or whatever we envision will be the best use of helping you to track your, your, your work. Later on, we're looking at things like tag sharing. You guys have been asked to be able to share your tags across Multi within your site across multiple admins. So um, a use case has been, oh, well, we always tag everything for a certain commencement, like everything that's going to be part of, yes, sir. The, the email, is this going to be a message? Can you, can you please talk on the mic? Huh? Oh, oh, here. Oh, that. Is the email that it's, you're showing is the email what you're showing up here, is that going to be a messaging center where we can kind of isolate communication with the students and so forth within ProQuest? No, but we have had that ask yesterday by someone else as well, wasn't it? Good. <laughs> Good. Yes, like, like I, I'm hearing you're getting emails outside of ETD admin. They're using your ETD admin email address, but it's going to your school, it's going to a different inbox. And it's not an ETB admin, and then you've got your ETB admin. Well, we, need to, we need to isolate our messaging progress. Yes. Because we got email all over the place. <laughs> yeah. and that will relieve a lot of. Some problems. of that, those challenges. Yes, thank you, Larry. Yes. 
that was really insightful and you're the second person. So who else is experiencing the emails everywhere? Is that pretty white and lonely, you guys? So yeah, I'm, I'm sensing that what we really need is like an email tool inside of, uh, like an inbox, you can just have just inside of ETD administrator just for your ETDs. So it doesn't populate and fill up your other inbox. And then you can associate it with the submission inside of ETD admin instead of going, wait a minute, I asked them to do, they're telling me that they did this revision, but it's in ETD, but it, yes, it's in my inbox and spending so much time trying to marry those up. Go ahead, Lily. So April, here's, here's what's happening. Um, my reviewer sends it from the ETDA. Yeah. And then you know the CC, the CC, whatever. So it copies to everybody. Then the student responds to everybody and it goes through the university email because it was sent there. And then the reviewer responds because it was sent to her. She, she then starts the chain of emails in the university emails. Nothing ever gets to go back into request unless it's the decision emails oh. that's released. So, so all of what you were saying, which is great, the history of everything is there, but nothing can be tracked there except for the decision emails that she goes in there and sends it out. So you see that the, you see the oh, wow. issue? Yeah. So I yeah. like the idea, but I'm not sure how to get our students to respond in there as well. That is a bigger, that's really the crux of the issue, isn't it? Is not, you can't track what's not in there. You can't, it's great to track it, but it only works if everything you're emailing is in ETD. And you'd want, it, really to, and you'd want it to be something that would be fed to it if, because otherwise you're gonna wrangle everything yourself and manually do it, which ah. really wouldn't help either. Would you wanna author your e all of your emails as well inside of ETD admin that are related to this? You do all of that now, right? You would go into ETD administrator, you'd pick an email, then you would, you would like have an inbox and then you would respond all of it within ETD. It's like its own little um, kind of email manager. Is that what you, are you envisioning? Uh oh, Larry's gonna tell me. <laughs> the way Microsoft Teams works, works with this is if you notify an individual that you're, you're starting a conversation or submitting a conversation within that Teams environment, it notifies them and sends them a notification to their email. Yeah. Okay. Now they have the option of either replying to that conversation directly yeah. in the email, they okay, do. or they can go back to Teams and respond to it. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. So look at look at the so and see the way they're doing that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're okay. right. We're not reinventing here. We're just that's a really good yeah. example. I was thinking right. about, I was actually thinking about like a Microsoft widget. That could be built in. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, you know, we, have to, we have to investigate, but it's good to investigate. I can see where the problem, though, would come if you're, I mean, everybody did everything in ETD admin, be, be perfect, right? But they don't. You know, they're, they're emailing to these people, those people, back to you. It's, you know, and that's where you want to be able to kind yeah. of corral all that information. That's a great idea. I like that. Very good. Thank you. Um, then, what else we're looking for later then? So that's the email. So it's bigger than just this page. We've got to be able to try, do better with email management overall. Tag sharing is the one that's been asked a lot for where you can share tags among all of your admins within a site. So you can all look at the same tags and know what's in a certain commencement and filter on tags. This is the student self-service status update. So this is a dashboard we were looking at sort of, um, it, it, we're designing a page where students can come back to ETD administrator, check the status of their submission, see where they are, where's their order, all of the sorts of things that they will be calling for, you know, and asking you for that they should be able to self-service. They're used to that anyway, right? Because they do it on Amazon. They, everywhere you go, if you order something, you go and you look, you get a tracking number and you track it yourself. They don't call Amazon and say, hey, where's my stuff? Because they don't have to, because Amazon tells them where their stuff is, unless there's a problem. And then of course, then the customer support is always available. And the other one we've been heard, we've been heard, we've heard about is the ability to manage um, undergraduate um, um, honors theses through ETD administrator. And what this would be is sort of the beginning of using ETD administrator as a tool to um, submit 
um, papers, things that your institution does that are not part of the graduate program, right? That you still want to capture for your IR, but you don't want to publish them. They're not going to be published to ProQuest or anything like that. They're not graduate level. Um, so we've had lots of requests from various, you know, various institutions that said, geez, if I could just use ETD admin for my honors thesis, then they could, we could direct them there too and make it a super simple workflow. No, no ProQuest agreements needed, you know, make the, the wording, you know, targeted the undergrad and a workflow that's, that suits them and, and, and you, um, that makes it super easy for you to hit deliver and it goes to your IR. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's just, you're able to then capture that information for for um, for those undergrads as well. So, um, and then the future. So this is where it gets really interesting. So we have heard from you a bunch of themes <laughs> at this conference and uh, and and before. Um, so these are the ones that keep emerging. Um, this idea of, of course, accessibility, um, embargoes and embargo management, um, student, this self-service for the students, which we're already um, planning on, on building that, templates and formatting, we heard that, um, <coughs> non-traditional theses, seamless IR integration, like with all of your, you know, your IR needs, and this sort of integrated, now I'm hearing integrated ecosystem for all of your emails and all of the tasks that you want to do inside of ETD administrator. Um, and this is a great list. So I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. Lucas. Yeah. So, you know, this list along with, and we'll get to the next slide in one second, but you know, this is kind of a list of, you know, what we're hearing from you, but you know, kind of, you know, big, big, big areas to kind of expand and, and kind of grow. And, you know, one of the things that we want to do is we want to build, you know, the tool to focus on the things that you focus on, right? That your students focus on. And so these were some of the ideas. And so, you know, one of my questions was, and we can actually have, you know, I think it's formal or informal, and this is with the people online as well, is, is to kind of, you know, look at this list here and, and really just question if anything stands out as something that would be something really important that you see. Um, you know, for instance, from, you know, I've heard, you know, in the last day and a half, you know, accessibility and embargo management being two areas. Is that something that resonates with all of you as, as important areas to kind of look into? Or do, are there others on this list or not on yeah. this list? So I guess what we're asking is, do you, if we did a poll or you guys would share, just tell us so what are, if of this list, what's your number one or two? And then what's not on this list? Help us to kind of, if we're getting all of those big themes. So I'll, I'll go one, I'll even go one from, for myself. So whenever I see the, the template, templates and formatting, right? Personally, whether it's in this area or another area, that always seems to be something for me personally, you know, when I'm, when I'm utilizing the workflow tool, things like that's important, right? You know, if you, if you can add things to that. So I saw that right away, you know, even before I even know exactly how it fits in is something that's probably might be important to folks. But, but is there anything here that just really jumps out at anyone in particular? If we had to pick our next North Star, or is it too hard to pick? What's that? It's there. <laughs> All of them? Well, <laughs> I would combine templates with digital assessment. Yeah. Since you're going to build the template, build that in at the same time. Yeah, because that's, that's the biggest one. Templates and accessibility. Yeah. Can you repeat that? I think people Oh, sure. Do I need to talk in the microphone for them? No, no, I talk in here. <laughs> oh, wait, the question. So Lily um, says that it is um, accessibility, but that templates and formatting go together with accessibility. and. We, I've heard that, you know, by making the template accessible, then you're already giving a leg up on the accessibility upstream of the PDF creation. So they kind of go hand in hand. Is that what you, yeah. What do you think, Larry? When you say a bar you know, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm making you guys get your exercise. When you say a bar management, are you talking about also approving that embargo within ProQuest? 
Uh, within the ETD administrator? Yeah. Yeah, so. So the advisor would have access to ProQuest. Uh, you want the advisor to, it could be yes. that, yes. I mean, we need to hear from you what that, what Those, exactly that means. We need to have some mechanism so we don't have to send out a separate email to the advisor and get approval from the advisor as far as the department is concerned. Do other that, that would keep it within one environment. Within one environment. Do you so guys have your advisors approve embargoes as well? Do they have to go through? I think it varies, right, from institution to institution. It probably varies, but we do require it. Yeah. We have, to, we have to have a letter from the embargo from the advisor saying that they approve of the embargo. So there's a step in your process. Oh. You know, there's with the kind of research that we do, there's they would be very upset if a student either embargoed or didn't embargo something. In many cases that would be worse. Uh, they would be extremely upset. So uh, that's why that's important. And so also managing the letter. Like the documentation, like would you do you need that letter or do or yes. would you, as long as that letter can be copied out by the ETD administrator, yeah, in order to put that in the permanent record, like a supplemental document of some okay, interesting. What about you know, in this one? And again, I'm I'm new to this area, but what about this non traditional thesis? Is that is that you know resonate as an issue for anybody in terms of being able to kind of corral and take care of all those types of, of theses like non-traditional or is that something that it's just not on your radar as being that important anyone online can join in your silence makes me think maybe it's not that important or at least something that well maybe not as important as other things as other things that yeah. are on that list yeah so, so I would say that, at least uh, for the students, I think the number one thing would be the self-service status tracking. Yeah. And for me. Yeah. <laughs> you must get a lot of calls. <laughs> um, and then I would say accessibility would be number two for me. Um, not traditional is really big at GW. So, yeah. so those, those for those three. Anyone else have... Is it, go ahead. Or something not on this. We'd love to hear if we didn't come up with it, you know. So I'll give some feedback about embargo management at the earlier slide. It's great that you have allowed us to combine the IR and the ProQuest embargo. We implemented that in July, well, before July, June, before the summer cycle. But we ran into some snags. So this is just for feedback. To okay, no. To expect some files to go through and pop through the cracks during the transition time and then suddenly have a mismatch that they can't change and we can't change. So I have to go through your customer service to get it fixed. And then there was also something about the language where yes. you select yes and no and it was really confusing. And we asked the customer service to revise that and they said, sorry, the language can't be revised. We have a we that we have in our backlog as a ticket because that has to be done by the development team, right? And that was submitted and it's in it's it's been recently looked at and refined as part of a fix. So that one we have, I wasn't aware of the 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 mismatch that happened. Yes, we had a few mismatch, and so my reviewer had to catch them manually. Um, and then have them corrected. Was that because you had some that are in process and then we turned it on and then? It, it must be because there were a handful, but the, the, the pain was to go for track and to make sure that they were the only few that got through the cracks. Yes. We were getting a whole a large number of files. Okay. Um, what do you mean because by non traditional pieces? Yes, we're talking about like um, what I what I am interpreting as non-traditional or things that are not a PDF or a, a document, things that are a music score or some sort of multimedia or a project or things that are you know evolving as the as acceptable um, parts of the requirements of a graduate degree. Different kinds of that would be great because I just entered a conversation with the Department of Integrated Visual Arts. Yeah. And they say the thesis or the thesis itself is not important. 
and yet we are making them submit that to fulfill the needs. But the essence of what they do is in the exhibit, yeah, in the you know whatever that was live, and so. It would be great to look at some examples of what can be done to support those. I am asking the doge to go to the faculty and say, if the abstract, if the document itself is not important, what is? Yeah. So that we can support you in thinking about the format that will support the student scholarship to a couple. Yes, and also the metadata that would be needed to be put with the file to Correct. make sure it's discoverable. Correct. Because that's really, really important. So, yeah, I I was speaking um, with um, Andrew at Figshare about how they manage metadata for their types of files, and it seems like that's really, they're kind of converging on this way of displaying these important contributions, making them discoverable, and having it all be part of the same ecosystem that you guys work through instead of having like, oh yeah, well we don't follow the regular path. So we're on our own path over here with our own tools and our own attempts to try to get this content into the IR. So it seems like there's a an inflection point happening where you're trying to bring it all together. That's why it's on this list because we are we hearing more and more about it. I think we've heard, um, I don't know if anyone is here on the call from California, but I did hear that there's either pending or they're considering, you know, making it mandatory through the UC system to accept projects or non-traditional works as a, as an acceptable um, uh, 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 acceptable to meet the criteria for getting a, a degree. So for us too, it's like, it's not just whether it's a multimedia or an artistic um, presentation, but also multiple authored. So how do you are you guys, you know, for me, if I was like, you do this, it's, it's a single author thing, but that's changing. And that has impacts to how you process the work as well. Do you say all the revisions to everybody? <laughs> or do you, you know, do you have to do individual and they just put the same document in different times and each one of them has different, like, that's a meal. Also, that's a, to me also part of that non-traditional where you have multiple contrib contributors to that. Um, to that work. Well, on that, talking on this topic, you know, I had a conversation yesterday about something about this not traditional we're talking about music in the music schools. And, you know, again, educating myself on it, but what was interesting is, you know, my thought is in, in anything that you see on here, it could be something that you only have, you're only dealing with 1% of the time, maybe less, but you know, you know how things are changed, they change quickly, 1% of the time, it's 4% of the time, and then 9% of the time, or even that 1% is five, you know, five is now everything you're doing, whereas, you know, that's why we're trying to think about it ahead, now, of, time. ahead yeah. of time to forward well, think about it, because, it, well, it's, it's ahead of time we can be. Yeah, I yeah. think we're still a little behind <laughs> yeah. the on this. Like, this is not something that, it's just becoming more and more yeah. common. But so, yes. Yeah, so currently, is there a limit in file size? Okay. So if somebody had produced something big, like the multimedia video, it could still be uploaded. Yes, but we don't manage large, large files well because they're large, large files, and they take time, and they can in your browser can time out before they <laughs> upload. So I mean. We don't say you can't give us a big file, but we haven't really set it up so you can get us the big file readily. So I think that will be part of it. But it's not just that right now we just we still follow the traditional path where you have to have some sort of document with metadata. And this is a supplementary file where this is actually really the act of the showpiece. And so it's not just about uploading, it's about displaying and it making it visually represented, like being able to play, hit play, hear the music, or see the dance, or or download the music score, or whatever it is that, to me, the big part of this discovery with, with you guys is to understand, well, what is the best representation? Where do we start? Like, do we, you know, how do we break this into pieces that we can e develop over time? And what does a representation of these different media types mean? And what does it look like to the user? And how do they want to see it? This is all new to us. So um, it, it it's all, yeah. And, and how does that fit into your workflow? So it, it's a big project. It's a big undertaking. But I think it's worth, it's when worth. When you say large files, what do you mean by large? Well, we're not getting, well, I know, 
I don't know. What do you think is large? <laughs> I know mean, I've got I had the first ETD that was over 75 megabytes the other day. That's not that large. Yeah. That's not pretty bad. Okay. Get up there. I don't think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my neck out there and say I don't think so, but I really have to ask my development. Okay. But I don't that doesn't seem that that large to me. No. Well, we're definitely not gonna say we won't take it. Yeah. So and you know, as these become more and more common, we as a company have to figure out how we're going to manage all that storage space. So you know, this is a, a decision for us too because that costs. Um, okay. that but yes, so Larry's like, uh -huh, I'm going to go now and I'm going to try to upload <laughs> a hundred megabyte file and see what happens. I'll, test, gonna, that. I'll test that. System he's going to hold me accountable. <laughs> you know, so, you know, remember that you know some of those problems again. You know. 10 years ago, like remember 10 years ago, you get a flash drive at you know, two gigs and you're like, wow, that's really impressive. That's like pointless now. Now you can buy. So even if that became an issue, even if we, if, if this file size was too big, that's our job to figure out how to, how to take care of that. You know, because if, if one file is going to be that big, you're probably going to have another one that's going to be bigger and so on and so forth. Yeah. We have to be ready to evolve as and we go. Before we jump off this. So the one other thing about this slide in particular, I think it's important to note is that everything that we're talking about here, obviously some bigger things, things that would be coming down the road. But the important part of this is, we talked about embargo ma management, Larry. Um, you know, what, what is that? And, you know, we already know what some embargo management is. But in terms of just expanding that, those are the kinds of questions that I want to ask. And I'm not just asking here, but I'm going to be, you know, digging and meeting with people and talking about what does that mean? What does it mean going forward? You know, non-traditional thesis, what is that? What does that mean? It, that way we can kind of understand it and understand the process and what you know what you're dealing with in these areas and then bring it back and decide how we want to develop and move forward with things. Great. Do I want to move on? Yeah. Is anything coming in? It's not a question, it was just somebody had a comment. Uh, yeah. So Oh, what was the comment? I was actually going to I was actually going to read it. Um, okay, go ahead. Cuz uh, Roxanne uh, Trees and I hope I say her name correctly. She talks about um, tag sharing is really important to us as we have several people conducting um, format reviews. So glad to hear that's coming. And then she says, and, and maybe this resonates to anyone here, we'd also prefer separate email and decision tabs as well as we often need oh. to email with students separate from registering a decision. And we would prefer to keep those communications in the ETD administrator in case another reviewer needs to take over. Being able to resend an email and change the email address would also be fantastic. So that's good. So this is someone saying that April, we don't want you to put the tabs together, which is good. So that's yeah. what we need to know. Can we go on the slideshow presentation? Can I go on a presentation? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. I'm, I'm... Uh, oh. Whoops. Go back. No, April. It looks like maybe you'd want to mention the uh, online forum we have where people can put in their their thoughts and votes and um, concerns, and those are all. I'll for you so you can go back to We will because we talk. Oh, there's I'm your sorry, animations. Yeah, no. Oh, there we go. Oh, Don't it's this way. No. Okay. So, Jillian, these are the top three requests via our ideas yeah. at proquest.com. So, we have an ideas portal and you can access it through ETD administrator or you can go there yourselves. This is where. You can go and look for ideas of others, other admins who have left you know, comments and ideas and vote on them or add your own idea for them to vote on. And so these right now are two of the top ideas. Oh, whoops, you're not seeing it. They're not seeing it. <gasps> What's going on? They're not seeing it. No, the slideshow is not. That there. <laughs> being able to have something simple like check all on my checklist option believe it or not that's like one of the top voted uh, requests on for etd admin um add degree date filter for reports and then make tags visible to my whole team so there are also a lot of little ideas yeah so well that's yeah so you know the previous slide obviously you know kind of things down the road bigger things you know but we don't want to forget the other things. So I know you, you were talking earlier about how you call customer service. You had an, an issue that needs to be fixed. But this is an area to kind of submit those kind of ideas that help your workflow, right? You know, an in, in area where you can say, 
you know, hey, um, the checklist page, check all option. You know, this would be really good if you could implement something like this. This would help me out. And, and so that's what we're looking for. You know, we, we're looking for the big ideas, yes, but we're also, there's some things that we can, you know, implement. Sooner, and, quicker, yeah, sooner, right quicker now, today, yeah. That, today, that will make it easier for you and for the students as well um, to kind of do those types of things. And so that area is really good. And these are, we take this seriously. We look at it, you know, we talk to our development team. We kind of determine, you know, what we can do in the short term and how to make it work. It's, it'd be great if I said it was, easy to make some of these things happen. We can probably make most of them happen, but you know, you know, we have to investigate it as well. But I think the really important you know, note here is that while we want your advice on some of the bigger picture things to move forward, even stuff like this that helps you day to day that you're seeing, you know, maybe a button is in the wrong place. Maybe it'd be better if you know, we had the drive, you could check all option you know, at the top of the list so we don't have to go through and check this person. I think they said it there. Um, I don't want to individually check all 25 boxes. It makes sense to me, right? That's just that's a that's a workflow functionality thing that if we can implement, we'll do that and, and bring it right back to you. So in parallel, our goal is to focus on the little things, the things that we can do today in ETD Administrator that help you in your day to day, while learning, developing, and moving forward with our North Stars, right? Trying to figure out what the next big thing is. Um, so we have a discovery community. Um, I've given you some of my, I have little cards. Uh, some of you have those those cards. Some of you have been a part of the community before um, where we would like to get the ETD admin together. We'd like to build a community um, where we can hear from you about some of these smaller things, the North Stars, where we want to go and get your feedback so we ensure that we build, you know, that next best thing according to what you need and not what we think you, you want, right? Because just sitting here today, I've learned, you know, four, three or four really important things that I had not learned before. And that's just a few minutes with you. So um, that's it. So we open it up to questions or ideas or suggestions. And um, yeah, you just want to hear from you. Anyone online as well. Yeah. Anyone that there are any questions? questions? Again, this is this is your mousetrap, you know, so we want to build it. <laughs> the way that you need it to be built to do all students the are not the students. mice no no they're not it's your mouse trap we're the mice that's Catch a bad us. analogy Catch Lucas. Us. bad I analogy I we're students can we change the standard emails that are already in for approvals and things like this yes it was launched this year Larry. you can go in and do anything you can change the templates to anything so change the what you put in there already. Absolutely. Anything okay. you want in there. And it's already way to do it. There is, yes. Okay, I may be back with you on that one because I, I'm not sure I see it. Okay, it's yeah, I'm happy to show you because we're really okay. excited about that one. Okay. Yeah, we were so happy to send out something. Because what you guys don't know is that, you know, ATD administrator, part of the reason why we're a little, well, in some cases more than a little behind in some areas where we would like to be is because we had to take our, maybe you can relate to this, our entire technology of ETD administrator and migrate it to a modern technology. And that took a full two years of our entire development team. And so we were trying to release little things along the way to keep, you know, to keep improving, but that really was our goal and we finished that. And so now you're seeing us going, okay, now we can sit back, that's done and look at what's where we're gonna take it um, and catch up in some areas and hopefully start being on um, more um, setting, you know, setting some of the bars for where things should go in the future. So that's our, that's the dirty laundry side of <laughs> where we've been for the last couple of years. Yes, Lynn. So we've been talking about building templates into the ETBA. Yeah. Um, that is the administrative feature. Is there a way to start thinking about um, before it even reaches there, where you're thinking about building that template with the accessibility to view it from the student's perspective, where they start writing in that rather than writing outside Word documents. Yes. And so then that way, if there's a draft, let's say, they've drafted it in template that we customize and it has accessibility built in, and then it pumps to the other side, almost like overleaf, right? Where you see what it looks like, and then it is saved as a document. And then somewhere in there, they could then share it with your major professor for review in there, 
still be able to change it. And then by the time it's done, then you click submit and it's uploaded to the ETDA portion. So it's just kind of like parallel. Yeah. Everything's working in there. Yes, we have, we looked at a solution that was doing something similar. It's almost like a WYSIWYG, right? Where as the student's writing on the left-hand side, the right-hand side is populating with the, what the PDF will look like once it's in your format and done, right? So they they can look at it and then you can look at it as well. So share it with you. You can go, oh, wow, it is. But this is working. It's fitting our format and give them feedback. So it becomes an interactive feedback tool, especially for early. What I thought was interesting, I've been hearing at this conference too, is this and it makes perfect sense. This early detection of format problems, <laughs> get it checked before they're written all 500 pages and then have to go back and change every figure and every margin and all of those things. So I see this also as a way to, for, you to, for, for you to get a sample or a check to see that they're on the right track early on, early intervention. So we have looked at that. Now we didn't, now what I, what we did was we went and we did some research to see, oh, is the formatting, pro, you know, challenge, because what we, let me step back. So what I did first was I went to the graduate students and I did a survey. I got like 600 or so grad students and I asked them, what was like the number one pain point you had in grad school? Like, you know, and I gave them choices, you know, like, was it worrying about getting a job? Was it you know, your, you know, family responsibilities, you know, all those things that grad students go through. Do you know what the number one challenge during the process was getting their dissertation ready to go, submitted, formatted, and out of the way? <laughs> I thought it was going to be getting a job. Like, that would be their number one concern. But in that moment, that is what they're most stressed about and what is hardest for them. So I said, aha, well, how about we help overcome that? by making the formatting as easy as possible, all they have to do is do the writing, focus their energies on making good quality content, and then let the formatting kind of automatically happen on its own. And that's what started us looking and doing research on this. But surprisingly, and maybe you guys, you know, I'd love to hear your feedback. Surprisingly, we were hearing that formatting is a thing of the past, that no one's really holding anyone, that it's going to become you know, it's less important than it used to be. And so don't worry about investing in something that it's the, the future is that it's not going to be there. So that's why we sort of said, well, maybe it's not something that if we do now in five years, it'll, you guys won't need it anymore. And that's where we kind of stopped thinking about it. But being at this, at this conference, I hear from this the, the, this group that formatting is still a big challenge. It will not likely go away anytime soon. But then I also was I was talking with Jess, who's a member of my team as well today. It's like, but it's also about accessibility. So when you think of it, it's not just about whether, and I know there's different camps around, it has to have the brand of the university and it needs to be consistent and you have standards. That is, that's, that's can be decided by the institution. But accessibility is, is a global problem, whether you have it in the strict format or not. And so by having a template and having that capability, you, my thought is you would give the institution the freedom to decide how strict they wanna be in their format but regardless, the output will be accessible, whether it's highly formatted or not, right? So that's where my thinking is now today. So, um, and you'll be happy to hear that there is like an accessibility council at Clarivate that is, um, you know, starting to really, we, we always have had accessibility and talked about accessibility. We integrate accessibility into our development and of our, of our web application. Content accessibility is harder because it's, it's it's we're looking at old you know retroactively looking back at content we made years ago that before accessibility was even even um, talked about much but there is a, a revised and strong interest in Clarivate um, for accessibility so I think we have an opportunity is what I'm saying it's it's coming together as perhaps I can't make promises right but I need to make a case and so one of the things about accessibility we were talking about is a few of us around um, around the table yesterday was in order for us to think about supporting your use case for accessibility, we need to understand what accessibility means. And so like I asked a question today of the Kent State, I think it was Kent State, like 
your WCAG is your standard, but what's your real standard, right? Like what are, like I said to you, like what are those four things I kept saying last night? What are the four must haves to be accessible? And once you guys help us to understand what those things are and I can say, okay, this is what accessibility means to our institutions. This is what they need from us. Let's forget about trying to the, the, the dream of WCAG, which is not, a, it's still a good thing to strive for. But if we were to offer you four things that we could do to make things more accessible, what would they be? And then I can think about, well, what can we do to deliver those? So this is, it will really have to be a joint project of hearing from you and then me, you know, making the case and trying to build a business case and, you know, and, and the investment buy-in from our institutions. Cause I think it's an absolute, it's just such a, a glaring need for you guys. Yeah. Well, it's a little after five, but you can okay. Are there any comments coming in? There was no, no, just that one that we had. Okay. Um, just, you know, real quick, just on this last slide, just to make sure um, the discovery community, you know, that, that little quote at the top, I always think is really important by Twyla Tharp. Um, you know, without the little ideas, there are no big ideas. And I think that's really important. Um, if you if you do have an interest in, in participating in this, you know, you, you know, you get to work with me, which is, you know, I, I think can be a pretty good thing. But, you know, but you also, you know, you also uh, you're really going to be, you know, feeding, you know, the, the ideas and thoughts as we go through, you know, what April just said about accessibility. Right. If we get four, you know, four must haves from you and Larry, you have, you know, five and three of them match up, you know, that helps us kind of build that, you know, the, what we need to do, you know, build the tool, make it right, and keep having those conversations. So, um, you know, it just really is important that we kind of build these, I've done these communities before, and they're always good to have because, you know, again, some of these meetings, it's gonna be the little stuff, the little ideas. Some of those little ideas do turn into big ideas, you know, how to do things. So if anybody does have an interest online as well, um, Anybody here, certainly you can come up to me. Um, we got these cards to pass out if you'd like to. It's like a, a, a couple question survey, little, little questions, very easy to do. Um, or you can email me. I know sometimes you know you just want to do that and say, I'd, I'd love to be a participant. But we should tell them a little bit about what that means. Oh. Well, being a participant means you have to give us at least three to five hours a week. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're thinking. <laughs> like what? No, um, I think our what was our meeting cadence before? Was it every month or monthly? I think it was. So we had a discovery community. I think it was maybe once a month that we would get everyone together. It was kind of like a you know a row revolving door of of people who would come, um, and then we would walk through new ideas, put up mock ups of things that we were thinking about building, get your feedback, um, and then we just we take that back and we you know then we bring it back to you again. Um, you know, maybe early testers, we're going to turn, you know, we can turn on a feature for your sites, you know, just if you want to try it out to see how it goes. And um, those are other options that we have, but it's not a big commitment and it's not meant to be binding. It's just opening up the floor to hear from you and, you know, to you to participate in ways, you know, that you would like. And, you know, one thing that David did in the past that I liked, and I, I think I'll have Lucas do as well is, um, have like a standing office hour too, where anyone can drop in and have a question for us about, oh, hey, did you know, or hey, this isn't working, or, you know, so you have a, a conduit to us, um, and we'll just have like a standing day that you can come in um, maybe, you know, once once every other week or, you know, a couple, you know, in, in addition to just our time together. That way you have a way to drop in and, and chat if you have the time or would like to, so. And that's all we have from so i just want to thank everyone online as well i wish you were all here with us and uh please uh it's been a pleasure really to chat with all of you and get to know you and hear your ideas and um yeah we'll be passing out cards and then uh, hopefully we'll hear from you yes thank you as well thank you um, very much being, just being here and then being able to meet all of you it's been it's been a great conference so far thank you thank you